So today, out of boredom and curiosity, I ended up doing something kind of risky. You already know I love exploring different operating systems, but usually it's nothing wild, just some random Linux builds or another version of Windows. Nothing too weird. But today we're diving into Red Star OS, North Korea's very own operating system. Yep, the country that's completely closed off to the rest of the world. Except for their president, this guy right here. Now you might be wondering, why is that dangerous? Isn't it true that North Korea's spyware doesn't even work outside the country? Yeah, that's mostly true, but the risk doesn't really come from spying, it's deeper than that. I'll explain as we go through the video so it all makes sense. Now let's talk about North Korea for a sec. The place is so locked down that they built their own versions of literally everything, including their own operating system. And I'm really curious, what's it like? Is it actually different from what we're used to? Can you do basic stuff like writing, drawing, or maybe even gaming? And before you ask, no, we're not launching Fortnite on this thing. I heard North Koreans hate that game. They think it's too childish. And you know what? I haven't seen a single North Korean in the comments trying to argue with me, so I must be right. Anyway, let's stop rambling and dive into this bizarre operating system. Alright, to be honest, this idea came to me out of nowhere. I was showering in the bathroom and suddenly thought, wait, do North Koreans use Windows, Linux, or Mac for their OS? Because we know from those YouTube videos titled 10 Astonishing Facts About North Korea, I've heard that they 100% have computers, but it's strongly restricted for people out there. And I also heard that they have limited access to the web. I heard that they have their tower where all propaganda is produced and spread among people, and they can access only about 10 or 20 websites inside the country. So I thought, what kind of browser do they use? What do they play? And most importantly, what kind of OS do they use? So after finishing my shower, I began to Google and found out they use OS called or in English Red Star OS. I don't really know the history behind this name, but I guess it's because of the flag and the red star in it. I wanted to download this OS because I wanted to explore it, and why not make a content about it? So I searched for the leaked ISO file of this OS until I found it pretty easily on GitHub, and without thinking, I downloaded it. First of all, I thought about installing it on my mini PC to make it more fun. I'm glad I didn't. You'll understand why soon. But let's be real guys, downloading random stuff like this from the internet can be pretty dangerous. You never really know what's hidden inside those files or who's watching. And honestly, the internet these days is full of shady sites and trackers. So staying safe online is more important than ever. That's why I use CyberGhost VPN. Huge thanks for them for sponsoring this video. It keeps everything you do online completely private. When you turn it on, CyberGhost encrypts your connection and routes it through their secure servers in over 100 countries. That means your IP stays hidden, your data is protected, and nobody, not hackers, not your internet provider, not even CyberGhost themselves can see what you're doing. And it's not just about privacy. You can also change your virtual location to unlock geo-blocked content, like watching Netflix shows from other countries or playing games that aren't available in your region. Plus, it can even help you find better online deals just by switching servers. CyberGhost works on every major platform. Windows, Mac, Android, iOS, even smart TVs and consoles. And one account covers up to 7 devices, so you can share it with friends or family. Right now they are offering their best deal yet. 83% off plus 4 extra months for free. That's just $2.03 a month. And it's completely risk free for their 45 day money back guarantee. Use the link in the description or scan the QR code on screen to grab the deal. Now let's get back to the video. So the first thing I did was install it on my own PC inside VirtualBox and turn off access to the internet for this OS, thinking I'd probably never use it anyway. And that was the right decision, I haven't used it since. Once I launched the virtual machine, I saw this image in front of me, everything was in Korean, so I had to use a translator. Here, for example, it said that this is Red Star 3.0, which according to Wikipedia is an older version developed in 2012, which means there are 4.0 and probably 5.0 versions. But no one knows for sure. We only know that information about 4.0 is slightly available because of leaks, but we have access only to version 3. Okay, I click next and notice this unique loading icon. I don't know if there's another version of an icon like this, it looks cool though. So I click next, next, next on everything until I came to the page to set up this time zone. And there's a big world map with North Korea in the center. Not amazing, but what's illogical is that you have only 4 options for the time zone. It's the capital of North Korea, Pyongyang Nyan the Russian city Yakutsk, Tokyo, and Osaka in Japan. Every spot is UTC plus 9, which means there is no difference between them. So the only real choice is Pyongyang. Obviously, there are no European or American time zones, and especially not South Korea. 
because the government probably doesn't want their citizen to even think those places exist. After several next buttons, I got to the loading screen, and once it finished, I finally saw the desktop. My first impression of this desktop, it looks so old, but that's obvious, it was designed in 2012. Another thing is, it looks a lot like old macOS. I think they copied the concept of macOS, everything looks like a Mac. The dock menu at the bottom, the file manager that looks like Finder but with a star in it, and even the app menu, just like on an old Mac. At the top you can see identical things like an old macOS, except instead of the Apple logo, there is a star, which symbolizes the OS's name. And as you can see here, the desktop wallpaper looks like it was designed in the Fritiger area style, with all that glass, water and fish stuff. I don't know, it just feels so uncomfortable to me. When I see that, I get a bit of panic. So once I right clicked my mouse to change the wallpaper, I saw Korean letters again. And at that point, I had to click randomly, hoping I'd find the setting to change my wallpaper. And amazingly, I found it on the first try. Then I looked through the wallpaper there, which were very limited. And guess what? All of them were uncomfortable as hell. You know those psychological videos on TikTok with a bus stop in the middle of nowhere? Or a gas station in a green field with that strange music? When you watch those videos, you feel a mix of relaxation and eeriness. Yeah, I felt the same feeling while choosing a wallpaper there. But internally, it's still based on Linux, specifically Fedora Core 2 or 3 from the early 2000s. But without terminal access, of course. I've also heard that it has a hidden antivirus. Not for viruses as you might think, but for surveillance of users who live in North Korea. Let's say you want to install something, photos, videos or other files from your USB flash drive. At this point, once you insert your USB flash into your PC, the OS takes the current hard disk serial number, encrypts that number, and writes the encrypted serial into the file, marking it. The purpose of watermarking files is to track who actually has the particular file, who created it, and who opened it. The Red Star OS provides its own firewall, antivirus system, and web browser pointing to internal North Korean servers. And even its encryption is custom developed. Any attempt by a user to tempt them with their operating system's core functions, like disabling the antivirus or firewall, would take the computer display an error message or reboot itself. And to be honest, I noticed a very shady thing from the developers of this OS. For example, as you probably know in any normal OS, if you open system files in the file manager, you'll see plenty of system files you can delete, though deleting them can cause problems for your OS. But if you try to open the system files in Red Star's finer analog in Korean, there's nothing. Even the size of each file is literally zero kilobyte, just empty and you can't delete them. So why did they add them in the first place? My guess is those are real system files, just encrypted so that people in North Korea couldn't see the root directory or make any changes. Another thing I've heard from some sources is that even though the OS is installed on your PC, the government can delete your files remotely through their servers and automatically watermark any file once it's installed. There's no way around it. It's already built into the system at the binary level. When it comes to apps, it scares me so much for sure. Because there are obviously no apps like the App Store for downloading external applications. Moreover, you also can't download anything through the browser. There are only several available websites you can use, and all of them are literally just empty websites about news inside the country, which is obviously fake, and boring governmental sites. Everything is just propaganda. I couldn't access them here, but I researched about them, and according to information on Wikipedia, there are only 28 websites. Also, the internet itself is different there. For example, instead of the internet, it's called the intranet. It uses a browser that was made on an old Mozilla Firefox platform, and it's called Our Country if translated from Korean. So basically you're stuck with building apps. And there are only around 20 boring ones. Things like PDF viewers, image editors, calculators, notes, mail calendars, and so on. I don't know if people even dream about getting a PC there. Probably not. Because what would you even do? Play with a calculator? or programming notes. According to Wikipedia, there were built-in games in version 2.0 of Red Star, but in version 3.0, it seems like there aren't any, which makes everything even more boring, a boring OS for a boring country. And since it's version 3.0, there are no security updates, no updated network drivers, and even poor compatibility with new hardware like modern CPUs and GPUs. This makes it even worse in terms of vulnerability. Because if you decide to install it on your main PC, or if I install it on my mini PC and turn on the internet connection, the GPU wouldn't find a driver for itself, and that could cause hardware issues later. 
And that's not even the main problem, because if you somehow connected to the internet, you'd get hacked easily. Ironically, not by North Korea, but by outside malware. By the way, that's exactly why I installed it in a virtual machine, not directly on my PC. So what I can really say about this OS? Well, it's pretty obvious it was made purely for surveillance and control. The design is just a straight copy of Mac OS, and overall, there's nothing special about it. If it were just a normal Linux distro, people would have actually used it back in 2012. As for today, who knows what's happening with the tech in North Korea? Maybe they've released updates, maybe even added some games, because honestly, this thing is painfully boring. Maybe there's already a fifth version out there that looks like Windows or Mac OS again. Wouldn't be surprising. But anyway, if you ever get curious and want to try it yourself, I really don't recommend it. If you do, at least use a virtual machine and keep it completely offline. Trust me, it's not worth risking your PC for something this dull. Anyway, that's pretty much it. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.